Hi, welcome to Bits and Pieces Quilting. Today is studio cleanup day, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Michelle. I have a friend coming over to sew with me tomorrow. And as I said, my studio's a mess. So I'm gonna clean up the studio and then I'll give you a studio tour because it'll be at its best. So let's dive right in. So welcome to my sewing room tour. I spent the last 40 minutes or so cleaning up and it looks a lot better. But what I have learned is that I think I need to do a deep clean probably sooner rather than later. But let's, let's do this tour. So coming into this spare bedroom in the house is my sewing studio. And we can start here at the door where I have all of my filming equipment, including the piece where I hang up my backdrop quilt when I'm filming my introductions. Although lately I've been using my cross stitch as the background and I, I kind of like that. So we'll see. This is my up-down table and my cutting table. Love this. It used to sit right underneath the cross stitch over on that wall, but I found it was really hard to film with the table there. So now it sits out here in the middle of the room, which is fine because it's almost always just me in here and there's enough space for me to get by in order to get to the sewing machine. Let's head over there. That's where all of the action happens. I sew on just an old dining table but it's really solid and really sturdy. And as you can see, I move my sewing machine as far to the right of the table as I can. It's a lot more stable there, especially when I'm machine quilting. When, I, when the machine is more in the center of the table, I find that the table can start to bump up and down and vibrate with the, the, the resonance of the machine. So I like it to have a really good amount of stability off to the side. I have a little power box down here in the corner because my sewing machine has North American voltage. And so I need the power converter here in Australia. And then I love this, I don't know if it's antique or if it's just old, uh, wooden ironing board. It's so, so handy. It's nice and narrow, the perfect height. And this is where I store everything I use every time I'm sewing. So I have my thread catcher, I have my water bottle and glass, and then this little caddy where I keep all of those immediate things I need, my walking foot, spare needles, lip balm, the um, screwdriver to change the foot, just all kinds of things. My seam ripper is in here, my bone folder, which if you've seen my favorite inexpensive tools video, you know how much I use and really like that. The labels for my projects are here, little hand cream, because you never know when your hands get dry, all of the clips because I prefer to clip rather than pin. My bobbin keeper, also a top five inexpensive tool. The oil to keep my machine in tip top shape. And then I also keep my uh, sewing machine manual right here. I always forget which way to twist the dial to loosen the tension or tighten the tension. And so it's open to the right page in this little plastic folder right here, right next to the machine so that if my tension doesn't seem quite right, I can quickly reference what I need. On the sewing table, lots of space is wonderful for machine quilting because this table will hold the weight of the quilt. I will often sometimes set up my tablet here and watch a little movie or something while I'm sewing. And there's enough space to leave the project beside me while I'm sewing. And then I am so, so lucky, I don't know if you can see it on camera, just to have this beautiful view out the window. We have an old gum tree and the, the builders left just the stump, but it's kind of a decorative piece that lights up at night and I have a beautiful view out the window when I'm sewing. And then if we go over here to the side, this is, this is really storage. So I store my fabric out of the sun as much as possible. So there's some buckets of fabric here and some other things here, including my rulers and cutting tools and things in these units. And then in the back, I'm a uh, multi-crafter person. Quilting and sewing is my passion, but I also really like knitting, crocheting, and paper craft. So those buckets and bins store some of those things when I'm not using them. I've set up my ironing station here, which is right next to the cutting station. My ironing board cover obviously needs a clean, but there it is, it's still working. 
And it's nice and handy to create a little area for myself when I stand here and, and work on a new project, cutting things or pressing things, and it's just a twist of the body. I have the current project I'm working on here, and you'll see that as a video coming up soon. I have my little caddy of cutting tools and things that I use here at the cutting table. There's all kinds of crazy things in here. Small and large rulers, a nail file, which comes in far more handy than you think. Uh, my cut air, of course, some pens, some measuring tools. Those are all here, right, nice and handy, in a little rope bowl that I made a number of years ago. These are fun projects if you've never tried them. And then if you saw my video on how I use the offcuts, this is where I store them. Right here, right on my table, all nice and trimmed up and stored and ready for the next time I have enough to turn into a project. And you can see when I took the lid off, can you see how that box used to be this color and is now this color? This is a perfect example of why I do not store my fabric out in the open. The sun is harsh on fabric, so I keep my fabric put away as much as possible. These fabrics are just here for a few days while I'm using them. My cutting table is the perfect height for me. My up-down desk lets me set the table to the perfect height for me. My idea notebook with all kinds of different ideas for past and future videos. Glasses because I'm becoming a person of that age. And then I have a little trash container here, and it's really a beautiful, beautiful handmade box, which I love, but I actually just leave it there to catch my off cuts of fabric and things, and it's nice to enjoy the piece and have it with a practical use. I have a bookshelf here. This is IKEA furniture. My parents bought this furniture for me when I was in high school, and I have lugged it around to every home I've lived in, and it's incredibly useful. The drawers are great for storing projects and fabric. The top drawer has some fabric and some kits in it, as well as a few finished cross stitch pieces. The second drawer, ooh, there we go. The second drawer is all of my neutrals, black and white and cream to use as backgrounds. And the bottom drawer are small little pieces of leftover batting. I have office supplies in the other smaller drawers. I have candy bags if I want to make any more pencil cases out of candy bags, as well as all my interfacings in here. On the bookshelves is where I store all the other bits and bobs, really. These are pattern binders, and then of course books. I have a few work things interspersed here because I just need places to store them. But some of my very favorite quilting books, my very favorite quick reference quilting books are all right here as well. I've got Kim Brackett's books for scrap baskets. I've got a book on making those fabric bowls we saw earlier. And then probably one of my favorites is the Thousand Great Quilt Blocks. This is an invaluable re reference when I'm trying to design a new pattern. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ideas in here that help me design new patterns. I have some projects that have been cut sitting here waiting for inspiration and waiting for me to get sewing. I have some thread stored up here. And then over on the side, I have some handbags I've made recently. This will be an upcoming video on my adventures in handbag making. And these are some of the candy bag pouches and pencil cases. I have a pencil case video that may or may not have been posted by the time you see this. And then between the bookshelf and the old ironing board, I have this really beautiful birdhouse. My grandfather gave this to me, and it was intended back in the day to hold CDs. And in a darker quilting space that I used to sew in at a previous house, I actually used it to stack um, fat quarters. And it was so gorgeous to see the fabric all laid up. But in this bright, bright sewing room, I really don't want my fabric sitting out. So unfortunately, it's filled with thread, which is, is fine, but it's not as much of a decorative piece as it used to be. But I really don't want my fabric to fade. And then if we wrap up, oh, you can see some yarn for crocheting. Over here is the majority of the stored fabric. So I've got a drawer of blues, a drawer of reds, a drawer of batiks, my two and a half inch scrap drawer here, 
and then a bunch of patterns and papers and bits and bobs in these little items. This basket is the maximum of unsorted fabric that I allow myself. So there's a bunch of bits and bobs of fabric in there, but once that basket is full, like it is now, it's time to clean it out. And then finally we have the closet. This is also where I store a lot of fabric because I'm able to close this closet door. And I'm really, really committed to making sure that closet door is closed. Not because I'm a neat freak, but because I really want the fabric protected from the sun. So um, in tidying up my room, I realized that I actually need to do a lot more of a sort, but I don't have time for that today. So lots of fabric stored here. Some of my paper crafting supplies stored here. I have this great drawer that has some of my pre-cuts, um, fat quarters, and a couple of jelly rolls and some other things that are all kind of coordinating fabrics. Those all get stored in here. The next drawer is the finished quilt tops drawer. So there's some things in here that still need to be quilted, but they're sitting here waiting for that. And then the bottom is more paper crafting. And then finally, in the dark recesses of the closet, I have some leftover batting, which I've lately taken to cutting up into small pieces to stuff amigurumi projects. And then I store some backings and battings and things way deep into the corner there. So there you are, a tidied up, if not clean, at least tidied up sewing studio. Thanks very much for coming along for my studio tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I am really looking forward to sewing with my friend tomorrow and doing it in a much tidier studio. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to make the most of your fabric bits and pieces.